Do you know the mustache man, the mustache man, the mustache man? Do you know the mustache man who's creeping everybody out? You see, people have, keep telling me, you need to shave the mustache. And when people tell me to do something, I, I don't do it. I don't shave my mustache. I won't watch the movie you recommend. I won't play the game you recommend unless I ask you. Because I'm a stubborn, hard-headed individual. What's going on, guys? RGT85 here with his glorious mustache. Buenos dias, y'all. Hope everyone is having a great day. We've got a couple stories that I want to talk about today on the channel. If this is your first time here, be sure to hit that subscribe button, like, and share the video. But without any further ado, let's talk about what's going on in the world of video games and we're going to start out with probably one of the worst kept secrets in gaming and that is splinter cell is finally returning now ubisoft announced this yesterday and a lot of people were concerned about this i'm still kind of concerned about it but i do have a little bit more comfort after reading what ubisoft is allegedly planning to do with this game now if you never played splinter cell um it's been since like 2013 14 around that era since we have seen sam fisher in a new adventure and of course he's been in like weird mobile games and stuff like that so a lot of people I feel like maybe don't understand what made Splinter Cell so unique essentially think of Metal Gear Solid but like way more emphasis on the stealth portions of the games and that's what made Splinter Cell really cool because it was one of the most in-depth stealth games that you had ever seen at the time instead of crafting a whole new adventure for Sam Fisher Ubisoft has announced that they're going to remake the first game in the Splinter Cell franchise I remember playing this game back on the GameCube I believe it was when it first came out and it was just an awesome Awesome experience you could do so many things in that game that you couldn't do in other games at that time at least on consoles I'm sure you PC nerds are gonna be like well back in 1997 we had this game blah 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 I had better stealth mechanics whatever I don't play PC games but I'm glad that you do now the whole thing about it was like intuitive enemies you know enemies that would sort of react to the situations there was a whole lighting system where you could take out different lights and make it so that it was darker so that you could pursue these enemies through the night just awesome awesome stuff that we had never really seen fully explored before on consoles and it made for an excellent game now like i said they've released a million splinter cell games they sort of lost its way around the times of like the later games in the franchise but i'm definitely looking forward to this game but i have to be a little bit worried about it because I mean it's ubisoft like ubisoft isn't the worst company in the world you know they make some good games but usually it's their smaller teams that make the really good games everything else is very just cookie cutter and i'm afraid that there's going to be like microtransactions and nonsensical dlc and nfts which I, I, why are nfts invading the world of video games like this is absolutely bizarre to me and i think it's absolutely disgusting as well do not support this shit. do not buy nfts or your favorite video games just just take the picture like it's a picture online just take it it's yours now it's on your hard drive but i am looking forward to this game obviously it's probably a ways away i wouldn't expect this until like 2023 2024 maybe hopefully we're all still alive by then so we can experience the splinter cell adventure but i'm cautiously optimistic about it have you ever played the first splinter cell game if you haven't you probably should it hasn't really held up all that great i feel just because it was a sort of a product of the times and there's a lot more you know in-depth stealth games now but it's a super fun experience and if you can appreciate older games i think it's definitely a game we're checking out but i'm very interested to see how they take this game what they sort of add to it to make it more modern and just how the game plays overall next up we have some interesting nintendo switch updates to talk about with both games and the online service we're going to start off with the online service first because well, it's something that people feel I'm overly negative about, whatever. I just expect a little bit more and I want a little bit more out of the service. But one thing that I think Nintendo has been doing good, even with all the N64 fallacies that they've been making, is that the right word? Fallacies? Sounds kind of like phallus. Um, but one thing that I think they have been improving upon are the free game trials, where essentially for about a week, you could play the full version of a game. And then if you like it, you could choose to download it at a discounted price. But I mean, theoretically speaking, you could play the whole game for that week and if you're really good at it or you just grind it you could actually beat the game you're getting the full version of the game which i think is something that nintendo needs to focus on because there are over thousands and thousands of games on the switch and this is a great way to get people to try out the online service well we have a new trial and 
I mean, it's it's not a bad game. Now, granted, I haven't played this game because I thought I had played it, but I think it was through the flood and the fire that I played, which is kind of similar. But Don't Starve Nintendo Switch Edition is now your free game trial. Now, of course, we got the uh, update yesterday that the Don't Starve sequel will be coming to the Nintendo Switch via that awesome indie world presentation that i absolutely loved i'm right there with you guys i thought it was phenomenal but this game is currently on the nintendo switch eShop with the full game trial and it's available until 12 21 at midnight pacific time so you got about a week to play it and you know i probably will check this game out it seems like a lot of people really love this game it doesn't seem like that there's a discounted price that you could pick it up at at the end of the trial though because it's still listed at 20 dollars, which is like why like I, I don't really get that i would think that they would want to lower the price to sort of get people into it you know after that week if you are enjoying the game still that way you could get it but going in at a premium price i mean it, it's kind of whatever you know i always think that's a nice bonus with these game trials that you could get the game at a cheaper price after the trial has expired but whatever i mean you're still getting the game for a week for free this is something that honestly i've said it should be monthly but really it, it should be weekly that's only 52 games a year and when you think about how many games come out on the nintendo switch i think nintendo the third party publishers and indie publishers can sort of figure out something to have a game a week so that people could check out something new and potentially increase the sales of this game but don't starve is currently the free game trial and like i said we also have some updates on some other nintendo switch games as well the first game that got a big update being 3.0.0 is Sonic Colors Ultimate. Now, when this game came out on the Switch, it, it, it wasn't great. It was a broken mess, and it was definitely disappointing because I loved Sonic Colors on the Wii, and I was really looking forward to this game. I didn't end up getting a review copy, and then when I saw review scores for this game, I was kind of like, yeah, I'm going to wait for this. Now, I still haven't picked up a copy of this game, but it seems like this new patch actually does a lot of good things. You have new free customizable artwork for Sonic. You get burst shoes, burst gloves, fireworks boost, and fireworks auras. There's lots of quality of life improvements in the game, and they improve the stability of the game, updates to specific enemy speed attacks things of that nature and there's actually going to be full screen movie playback from the sat option satellite so you can see full motion video from the game there's a full screen boost blur effect that you could turn on and off and they actually included a toggle for the remixed or the original soundtracks of this game it's really a shame that this game just came out in the horrible state that it came out in because i feel like it's a really good game at its core obviously this was a bit of a rush job we've seen it time and time again with games like grand uh, theft auto on the nintendo switch as well it's not really just a specific nintendo switch problem it's an industry-wide problem as both of these games definitely had some major core issues on other consoles so you know it's nice to see that they're improving it maybe in the new year i'll finally pick it up because maybe they'll have all the patches on there but it sucks because if you pick up the physical version of the game you still have to download all the patches but I mean, whatever. It's better than playing it as a completely broken game. And Animal Crossing New Horizons also got a update with version 2.0.4. Basically, they fixed like some weird thing where it was like clothing was like not happening and like characters in the game were naked. Like naked Animal Crossing characters. Like, you know, that, that's kind of weird. And really, that was the whole main thing was fixing the naked Animal Crossing characters. And <laughs> like Animal Crossing is a game that should be getting updates all the time. It should be getting free shit all the time. It should be getting new items, new things to do. Like, I, I, I don't get it. I don't get it. If you picked up Animal Crossing on the Nintendo Switch, let me know in the comments section why. Especially, I should preface that by saying, especially if you've played previous versions of the game, because I played the game to death on the Nintendo GameCube and the Nintendo DS, and I just don't see anything in this version of the game that really makes it better than those versions of the game. There was so much more Nintendo-related stuff in there. I remember I had like this whole shrine to Metroid on the DS version of the game with all these cool statues and like Metroids and like freaking, you know, glass jars and stuff like that. And you had all these crazy patterns that you could do as well. And of course, the GameCube game, you had freaking NES games in it. And it just seems like these newer Animal Crossing games just don't have shit in them that would make me interested. And it seems like they've sort of removed stuff that was in these core games from the back in the day with the GameCube and the DS. So let me know in the comment section down below why this game is better than those versions of the game if this game is indeed ver better than those versions of the game but yes no more nudity in my animal crossing your children can play it now
Alrighty, so that is going to do it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Be sure to let me know what you think of everything in the comments section down below. Will you be revisiting Sam Fisher in his return with Splinter Cell? What do you think about these updates? Are you going to check out Don't Starve on the Nintendo Switch eShop? And how much did you love that Indie World presentation yesterday? Because, I mean, the mustache man did. He loved it. And as always, guys, thank you for checking out this video. Be sure to check out yesterday's video if you missed them. We reacted to the Indie World presentation, talked about some brand new details in The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild 2. Lots of fun stuff to go over in that video. And as always, I'll catch you guys on the next video. Later.